All right, in this video, I'm gonna attempt to do something which is gonna be crazy, and I've probably lost my mind because I'm doing it. I'm gonna attempt to show you Lightroom, starting from a blank Lightroom install all the way through the entire workflow in less than 15 minutes. I know this seems crazy, so turn up your hearing because I'm gonna be talking fast, and you know what, if you've got 15 minutes to spare, right now, you can learn Lightroom. In this video, I'm gonna to attempt to show you the entire Lightroom workflow in around about 10 minutes. And we're actually gonna start here from a blank Lightroom uh, install. This is what it'll look like when you first install it. And I'm gonna show you the entire basic workflow. So let's get started. So the first thing we're gonna do is import. We need to bring something in. So we're gonna click the import button. Generally speaking, uh, you'll see all the different things over here that we choose it from, all the different sources. Generally speaking, you'll be bringing this in from a flash card or uh, I'm copying it from my hard drive right now. So we can see here I've selected these. We've got 232 photos. I'm actually just gonna turn these off because I don't wanna import all of these for this short tutorial. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select the first one. I'm gonna scroll down a little bit, maybe hold the uh, shift key and select it. And now we've selected a few of the photos. What I'm gonna do now is click on there and you'll notice that all the selected photos now are checked, which means these are the ones that are gonna be imported. So the ones after here are not, so we're just importing a few to get us started. Now there's some options here. We can copy as a DNG, which will convert it to DNG on import, which is a great idea. Copying, this is something you do when you bring it in from a flash card. Um, you always wanna copy it because what it does is it leaves the original while moving the original. So if I choose copy, I can select the location I want this to go to, usually under my pictures folder. And it will also leave a copy on the flash card so I can make sure everything's properly copied over before deleting it. The other option is move. If I choose move, it's the same as copy except it deletes it from the source. And then the other option, which we're gonna do right now, is just add. So notice there's no destination showing. That's because we're gonna keep it in its current location, add it to the Lightroom catalog, and manage it through Lightroom. So I'm just gonna click import, and I'm gonna bring it in this way. So this is a great way of doing it, um, because that way now Lightroom is gonna handle everything. You saw up there on the top left, if you missed it, you might wanna rewind a little bit, just a little taskbar there that was showing as it was importing. We can view these, we can change the size of the thumbnails here. So we have those options there. Uh, you can see that. Um, so we can look at it down a little bit. So what we wanna do is we actually wanna rate these as we're bringing them in. So I'm gonna select the first one. But before I continue, there's an option I'm gonna go up under here. I'm gonna go up under Photo, and I'm gonna choose Auto Advance. Now I'm gonna turn that on. So if you look under there, Photo Auto Advance is on now. And the reason I'm gonna do that is I'm gonna double click to go full screen. I'm gonna rate these one to five stars by hitting the one to five key on the keyboard. So I'm gonna hit the four key, and now notice it gives it, and it moves to the next one. I'm gonna hit five, I'm gonna hit five, 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 four, five. I'll give that one a five, I'll give that one a, a three. Um, that one's pretty good, I'll give that one a four. And I'll give that one a four. Uh, I'll give that one a five. That one looks great too, a little much headroom, but I could still use that five. Five, four for that one. Uh, I'll give that one a three. Um, and notice I'm just, all I'm doing is I'm just hitting these keys on the keyboard here to give these uh, the different settings. So if we don't like them or we do like them, we can do that. Um, I'm gonna drop that one down a little bit. This one's pretty good. And right now I'm just kind of just pushing some of these around a little bit. And you might choose, you know, maybe five for you as a keeper. Uh, maybe three is something you really don't like. Um, I'm not a huge fan of when she's doing the duck face, so I'll, sometimes I'll kind of pull that off a little bit. Um, so what I'm doing is I'm just hitting some of these just different settings there. Whoops, I hit a six there, which gave it a color. And uh, as you can see, we've been giving them these ratings. So I'm just going to hit the G key right now to go back to grid. And you can see that I didn't get around to rating them all, but you get the general idea. I kind of like that one. I'm going to give that a five. And notice that we can do it here too. So there's different ways of giving ratings. So there we go, we've given these different ratings. And now what we can do is if we wanna sort them out, we can actually filter these by going down to the bottom and we say, you know what? Right now I see how many photos have we got. We've got 72 photos selected. I wanna see just the five star. So if I click on the five star there, um, and I'll just click it a couple of times, five star and higher, 
And now um, it's only showing those ones. So you can see down here 20 of 72 photos. So we've selected 20 of these that we thought were pretty good. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to select them all by hitting Control A or Command A, selected all the photos that I like right now. And I'm going to go down to Collections. I'm going to make a new collection. I'm going to create a collection. I'm going to call it Keepers. And I'm going to include all the selected photos. Click Create. So now what we've done is we've created a collection there with just these photos in there. So at any time here we could show all the photos and you can see we can scroll through them all. But we go to our collection and boom, there's the photos that we want to work with. At this point here I'm going to hit Command A, select them all. And I might want to do some keywording so I can find these later. I'm going to do woman, do a comma studio, model, and I'm going to do Lino. And I'm going to hit enter. And notice the little tags appear now. So now all of these photographs are now tagged with these um, metadata. So I'm going to go back to all the photos. And here we go. We've got all kinds of photos showing here right now. And if I want to search, let's do by uh, metadata here just for fun. Actually, we'll do text, sorry. Uh, we can do any searchable field, or if we wanted, we could do a keyword. And let's do a keyword studio. And notice when we do that, that's another way of sorting them out. So that's basically working with our collections, sorting everything out, and then using keywords and tags for um, organizing these and obviously as you work on more photos you apply different keywords etc 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 so that gives us all the photos so maybe the next thing i want to do here is i'm going to go now into the develop module so i've double clicked this i've selected this photograph and i'm going to click on develop so now we're moving into the next module library is where you organize and manage all your photos develop is where you do your adjustments now on here on our histogram if i click these little things it shows me where the clipping is so clipping is where we start to lose detail in these photographs in the highlights or shadows. So if I up the exposure, turns red, we go the other way, it turns blue. Double click to reset any of these values. I'm going to turn these off. First thing we want to do is make sure our white balance is set. So our shot looks pretty good, but let's also have a look at daylight. It actually warms it up just a little bit. Um, we have different options here. We could try the, uh, the flash if we wanted. It's actually kind of nice, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to go in here. I'm going to warm this just ever so slightly just to push it a little bit because sometimes I like to do that. Or you can grab the eyedropper tool and you can click on the back. That will give you, as you click on an area of white there, that will set that to a neutral and it will give you a very neutral color. So I'm just going to give it just a little tweak there. Now we're going to dial down to adjusting. Highlights. I'm going to turn these down and recover a little bit of highlight detail. I'm going to open up the shadows a little bit. It shows more detail there in the hair. I'm going to hit the blacks though still to give it a body. Watching this histogram here, I want to make sure that I set the histogram right there. And then the same thing with the whites. We're going to increase the whites until it just touches. So we've set some, some good levels there. You could do overall exposure adjustment if you wanted to. Maybe just bring it down a little bit. And then we could go to the other settings. Maybe we want to reduce the saturation a little. Give it a little touch of vibrance. And maybe just give it a touch of clarity to make it crisper. We want to look at before and after. Hit the backslash key as before. And then it shows after. You can see there it's kind of a little cool. And a lot of ways I actually like the original color. I set the white balance. And I also set the exposure properly before I took it. But let's do this one here just for fun. Um, maybe I'm just going to slightly cool it down. And let's look at some other adjustments here. Let's go down to our curves. I'm going to create a little contrast by darkening off our shadows a little bit. Increasing our highlights ever so much just giving it a slight touch of curves and there's some other things we can do in here we can do split toning for effects and why don't we do that just for fun um, this is not necessarily something I would really do to all my photos but let's just do this just so I can show you so we're going to choose the highlights here give it a little saturation put a little blue into those highlights for a little flavor uh, let's do the shadows maybe we'll push that to a green up the saturation a little bit just give it a little bit of color if we don't like that take it back more towards the reds warmer uh, let's try that there with the greens mm, kind of like it more around the oranges there let's pull the saturation back a little bit play around with the balance between the two get a nice feel for the image let's look at this before and after backslash key before after definitely liking that toning a little bit more um, we've got sharpening and all these different things we could apply here noise reduction 
Uh, we've got localized adjustments. Let's do a little vignette on here just for fun. So I'm going to bring this down. I'm going to go down to the uh, vignette, post crop vignette. And I'm just going to pull it back a little bit just to create a little bit of a vignette effect around the, uh, just around the edges there. So let's try that again. Notice that's what it kind of does there. Now let's take it to there, play around with the midpoint, maybe open it up a little bit, feather a little stronger, and uh, let's keep our highlights down. And you can see we just kind of created this little portrait effect there. Now there's other things we could do. We could zoom in and there's tools up here. If we had red eye, we could get rid of that. Uh, we can do localized adjustments. We can brush on certain things if we want to brighten or darken certain areas. In fact, why don't we do, uh, no, actually we're not even going to do that because we don't need to. And uh, let me just hit the backslash key, before and after. Oh, I like that. If that feels good, let's create a preset. We call it, call it the Lena preset. So now I've created a preset. And I know I misspelled, it doesn't really matter. We could look at different things to see how we like the way different uh, presets would look on a photograph here. So we can uh, experiment with those different settings there. And uh, one of the things you can do too is you can actually just roll over and you can see how those are going to look before we apply them. So, you know, some of these are just going to look crazy. They don't look good. Um, but obviously we wanted that. That's kind of an interesting one. That's nice. But let's go back to the one that we made and uh, we'll let that one apply. And let's go back to the uh, library. So now that we've done that, now that we're inside the library, let me hit the G key for the grid. We've done that. We can hit Command A. We're selecting all the photographs. If I want to take this from here and put it on all the photos, I'm going to choose Sync Settings. Uh, but before I do, let me just cancel. I want to grab only the five star images. There we go. So we've got the five star. So now we're applying it to 20 photos. So once again, I'm going to select my photo first. Hit Command A to select them all. Notice this one is more selected than the rest. Hit Sync Settings. And there's all the uh, settings we can apply there. And just hit Synchronize. And now notice that this setting now is going to go through to every single photograph. And now we've edited all these photographs the same way. And I really like that look. It's kind of a nice look there. And at this point here, we like, you know what? I really like this. What do you want to do with it? Would you like to export it? Um, would you like to uh, share it? So if I'm going to do this, I'm just going to, I could open it in Photoshop. I could right click here. I could choose edit in Photoshop and do all kinds of adjustments in there. Or if I'm finished with it, I can choose, uh, you know, let's crop it a little bit. Let's just double click on that one there. It's looking really good. She's got a great Angelina Joy Lee look going on there. I'm just going to choose the develop module, grab the crop tool, and I'm just going to drag that down a little bit. We're going to crop that in a little bit, maintaining the aspect ratio. Now you don't have to do that. You can change it here as custom as shot or different variations. I'll just do a custom. And now if I do the custom, I can crop this down exactly how I want. Actually, let's change that. There we make sure we're on the custom there. And, uh, you know, we can play around with that. We can do different things with our aspect ratios. Um, actually, we turn that check mark off. Now it's not going to be constrained. See that? We can do different things. Kind of liking that. Let's crop it in a little tight, but not too tight. Hit the Enter key. It's cropped in nicely. And if we wanted to export it, we choose File Export. And at this point here, I've got um, some presets that I did make previously. Uh, you wouldn't have any presets, so you would have to go through here. And maybe you want to share it on the web. You know, you might want to uh, choose a location where we want to save it to. Rename it if you want. Make it a JPEG. Uh, set the quality for sharing. So somewhere around 60. Uh, set a width and height. I've got this to 1600. Um, resize to fit. You can, um, in this case here, we can make it the long edge. So if I choose long edge, whatever is the largest. So now it's not going to be any taller or wider than 1600, depending on what that is. Uh, if we want, we could apply a watermark. And you can go down here, edit watermarks. You can create a watermark, apply it to your image. And then you just simply hit export. Boom. And notice up here, it shows a progress bar. Now you're exporting a JPEG to that location that you want to put it in. So at that point there, you could take that JPEG and you could share it. You could do whatever you wanted. Let's go back to the library module. There's other options we can do here. Uh, one of the other things we can go down here, we can set it up with Facebook, Behance, or Flickr, and we can share it on there directly onto the social networks from here. You could go to the print module if you wanted. Click on the print module, 
set up all your print settings. You can click print and get some fantastic prints from here. If you want to do these as multimedia, you could click on book or web and you could actually create a book. You could have that book printed. You could choose a slideshow by selecting there on slideshow. And then when it goes to the slideshow um, option there, it's going to set this up. We could uh, move these around different ways and we could look at the different slides. So it's, what it's actually doing is literally building that slideshow right now. We could set our options, captions, overlays. We can use the metadata for those. Uh, we can add watermarking. We could even go down. We could add music. And then when we're ready, we would hit play or preview. In this case, it's going to take a little sec because these are full size raw images that it's working on right now. And uh, we've got the 20 images that we like. And it's going all the way through. It's almost there. Give it a few more seconds and it'll start to play the little dummy slideshow for us. So as you can see, uh, there's a lot of things we can do in Lightroom. This was a whirlwind uh, tour. Have a look. Check it out for yourself. And here we go. Here's our slideshows playing right now. This kind of gives you a little preview and it's going from one image to the next. Um, there's different things we can do with the slideshows. We can change the slides, how long we want them to last. We can change the fades. If you don't want them to fade, you want it to happen quicker, you can do that. And then when you're done with it, you just simply hit the escape key, get out of there. Um, we can go back to our library uh, panel. And uh, let's have a look at, a, at one of those images that I kind of liked here. That, that's kind of a nice one. And there we go. That's basically, yes, I know that we can go much more in depth. In fact, I do have Photoshop Cafe. I have a 13-hour Lightroom training that goes in depth in every single option. But this gives you pretty much what you need to know to get started uh, working with Lightroom. So just follow these steps and, um, you know, and have fun. Happy Lightrooming.